Hello everyone and welcome back to Tech Raptor for a fun little retro rewind, some retro Raptor discussion here. I'm Social Lead Christian Buckley. Joining me is uh, Andrew Stretch, the social content. No, what am I? Let's scrap <laughs> that. I am the senior content manager. Mm -hmm. You said social, I'm senior. There's an S in there. Whoops. SCs. This week's exciting because Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct. Uh, you can't see it, viewers, in this layout, but I have Nintendo stuff on my wall right there. Stretch can see it. I'm a fan. I believe you are as well. I mean, who who did not grow up in the 90s and not have at least a couple of Game Boys, Game Boy Pockets, the large gray Game It just, there's Game Boys everywhere. Yeah, so many, so many Game Boys. Uh, Switch, though, there's more Switches now than Game Boys ever were, officially, I That's believe. That's wild. Yeah. So because of that, because Nintendo looks back and they're like, you know, so many people have Game Boys, but now even more people have Switches. Let's bring them the Game Boy library. <sighs> Finally. <laughs> yes. Uh, this week at the Direct, they shadow dropped two libraries, the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color, which they are officially now marketing as one console. <laughs> uh, so that debate's laid to us. And the Game Boy Advance for expansion pack members. It's it's so great to see. It's Nintendo has one of the most prolific and well loved backlog libraries um, that they have just been sitting on. We've seen them sit on it with the 3DS. We've seen them sit on it with the Wii and the Wii U. We're probably like let's be honest. We're probably gonna just see them kind of sit on it a bit here, but they've at least released it. So that's that's something good on good on Big N. What we're going to do today, we figured it'd be yeah. fun to give you all a little retrospective look at this library going into the weekend, now that you may or may not have access to the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance libraries, if you're a sub to the NSO base or expansion tier. We're going to do a draft, both libraries combined. We're going to pick three games, the best all-killer list, in our opinions, that you should check out as soon as possible. You can let us know who has a better list. If you play through both lists, let us know which one you had more fun with, because that'd be pretty fun. <laughs> but uh, we've prepared the entire list of games available right now. I will run through them briefly, and then we can begin and our draft. we did not count any of the ones that we know are coming, correct? That's true, yes. So yeah. games like the Zelda Oracle yeah. games, mm -hmm. uh, Metroid Fusion... Those were listed F -Zero. as F-Zero. <laughs> Those are coming down the line to this library. And there are rumors aplenty as well of Pokemon maybe dropping later this month for Pokemon Day. But currently on the base tier, all subscribers to NSO, no matter what tier you have, have access to the following games. Link's Awakening DX, Tetris, Kirby's Dream Land, Metroid 2, Mario Land 2, the six golden coins, Wario Land 3, Alone in the Dark, Game & Watch Gallery 3, and Gargoyles Quest. So that's the Game Boy slash Game Boy Color Library. Mm -hmm. GBA has access to The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, Super Mario Advanced 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, <laughs> Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, Mario Kart Super Circuit, Forgive Me, Kuru Kuru Kururun and WarioWare. So that is our pool of selection for games. We just got to pick three. It's first come, first serve. Stretch, you can go first. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. I wasn't sure whether I was going to go first or second. So my first up is a little bit of a stranger take, but Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Okay. Fantastic little RPG. They did a lot to make Luigi his own character. Um, I have some great memories of playing that. Mm -hmm. And that's... Uh, I'm, I'm Game forgetting... Boy Advance. Yes, I'm forgetting the name of the studio, though, but they shut down recently in the last few years, right? Alpha I want to say Cam... Camelot? Okay. I know... Yeah. Make me look up things. I, 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 I want to say one of them was Alpha Dream. Alpha Dream is a studio that definitely shut down. That was working. No, on yeah, you stuff. you nailed it. Alpha Dream, developed by Alpha Dream, published by Nintendo. Cool. So, the, how does that one differentiate itself from, say, the Paper Mario RPGs that I know people also love? Uh, I have no experience with either series, but I am definitely curious in that one. 
So it is it is pretty similar, you know, straight RPG, same as like Mario Seven Stars. Um, but uh, a really fun thing about this as an RPG is that um, your A button will control Mario, your B button will control Luigi. You can use the triggers to like toggle between things that they do. But that also means in combat and stuff, it's not just you do some damage, they hit you, you do some damage, they hit you, but like a buzzy bee will show up or like a, a bug will show up and then like roll towards you. And you can time a jump to completely avoid it. Or you can even like land perfectly and do damage. Mm -hmm. And it's just such a such a better way to engage um, RPG combat as opposed to just like, you know, having the having the cursor remember where it is and just like mashing through the same thing for every character. Mm -hmm. That sounds very cool. I definitely want to check that out. And I have full range to now. For my first round pick, we're going Game Boy. The Legend of oh. Zelda Link's Awakening DX. Oh, excellent choice. Especially the DX that you can play all of them in like whatever format you want. Mm -hmm. um, that's a that's a good one. I The only reason I didn't put that on my list is because the remake came out so recently mm -hmm. also for Switch. So specifically with Link's Awakening, I think this is a... Personally, I think it's a much stronger 2D Zelda than A Link to the Past. I know A Link to the Past mm -hmm. was the one that, you know, invented everything. But going yeah. back to that one, it's like, so what else do you do? Like, I've seen these mechanics and these systems in play in every single Zelda beyond this. So going back to it outside of the historical aspect, I feel like it's lacking. Link's Awakening was the follow-up. It takes all of the things that game did great and gives it so much more character with the limitations mm -hmm. of the Game Boy. I think... As great as the remake is, I really enjoy playing it. There is something to the very restrictive art style, script, uh, chiptune soundtrack that just gives the original game more of like a haunting dream-like feeling, like a surreal yep. dream-like feeling, as opposed to a cute, wonderful dream-like feeling that the remake has. <laughs> both great. You want it to be a little bit more nightmare. <laughs> yeah, both great, but I do think you get the original intent of like a, oh, I should be thinking about the things in here more than like, oh, wow, 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 this is so cute, you know. <laughs> so that is my That's first. That's an excellent pick. choice. Thank you. My, my second, also a 2D Zelda game, pulling from the Game Boy Advance, it's going to have to be Minish Cap. Um, such a great game. I'm going to, when I replay it, I know that I'm going to relook up the guide to make sure that I get that like one required link that takes you to the sky area so that you can get the final arrow upgrade because for some reason they made that missable in the game, oh, wow. which is just incredible. It's like a whole sub dungeon that unless you make a link, uh, like the, the coins, the coin link earlier in the game, later on in the game, a, a updraft will never appear that takes you to this, this wow. secret optional dungeon. That's surprising. Yeah, I mean, I hear great things about that one. Uh, that was a Capcom-developed Zelda, which is super cool. But I've never played it. I love the art style, you know, definitely inspired by the Toon Link Wind Waker era of Zelda. Mm -hmm. uh, it always seemed very neat. And, uh, you know, I think Mario Odyssey stole that little hat with a personality from that game, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Less possession, but yeah. Yeah. It's always good to, to have a good conversation with your headgear. Mm-hmm. For sure. Uh, I am also going to pull from the GBA for my second pick. And okay. I'm going to go with WarioWare. <sighs> you bastard. WarioWare <laughs> is such a phenomenal game. But I never played the GBA one until last night when this dropped. I played Smooth Moves on the Wii. And I can tell you, viewers... You can play one WarioWare, you played them all. <laughs> because yep. a lot of the micro games are great, but from more, my memory of the Wii game, it's a lot of similarity of like, okay, jump this thing, pluck this thing, snap this thing. But there's such a great humor to it uh, that's just so fun. And you have three seconds for each little mini game. And just failure states in those are also funny. Like one of them is thread this needle. And if you don't do it right, the thread just like kind of like limps in like a very funny way. And it's like a hard cut right after that. You're on to the next game. So WarioWare is great. Very, very fun way it to kinda, spend some time. 
it kind of does that good like comedic quick setup punchline yeah but it's just like punchline 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 yeah. punchline <laughs> yeah and if one doesn't work you're already halfway through the next mini game so like it's got a yeah. great pace to it i love i love that game for my next game uh i will be heading to well for my final game i will be heading to uh the game boy with wario land 3 mm. um you know mario absolutely dominates the uh dominates the um the console but Wario Land 3, I remember being being just an absolute blast to play as a kid. You got some really like fun and unique upgrades. Um, the world was really cool. Uh, I know that there was a lot that incorporated not just the upgrades, but also Wario being in his downgraded state to kind of like give him some more high stakes or movements that you could only get to while small. Um, it's just a just a great game to play. Now, for my final pick, I could go boring. And say Tetris. Because I love Tetris. <laughs> I adore Tetris. I played Tetris for an hour last night on the GBA. Or on that the was GBA my last hour. backup too. <laughs> but I'll throw a swerve. Uh, Kirby's Dream Land. That was the first Kirby game. I had it as a kid and I played it last night. In full. I got through it in an hour. It's essentially Jeez. a boss rush. With a little bit of platforming in between. You can't get the copy abilities. It's just swallowing and then spitting out stars. And it's just cute. It's a fun little Kirby adventure mm -hmm. that you can get through in a sitting. And, uh, you know, was Kirby's origins. And if you care about Nintendo history, you can see the origins of Wispy Woods and King Dedede. So it's, it's, a, it's a neat game. It's like Kirby in its most, like, distilled, pure form yeah. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, let us know which game lineup you think is best. Uh, Stretch, you want to run through yours again? for everybody? Yes, I can. Uh, my number one is Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. My number two is Minish Cap. And then the third one is Warrior Land 3. Nice. And my number one is The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. My second round pick is WarioWare for the GBA. And my third is Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy. So again, let us know who has the stronger lineup of retro Game Boy Nintendo games. Uh, let us know which one you check out, if you check out any of them. And we will be able to hold this over each other. Whoever gets the most votes, <laughs> we can keep bragging, bragging, right. and, bragging rights over Hey, that. next next time they, they release another batch of game, we can do another draft and we can sure. carry scores over. Absolutely. It's on. <laughs> uh, and, you know, who's to say how frequently we get games at a clip, you know, because... The NES and Super Nintendo, I believe, for a while was like two or three a month, and 64 was absolutely just one a month at best, <laughs> with a couple mm -hmm. exceptions. But uh, yeah, we'll see what's in store with both these libraries, and you can for sure check out more coverage of them from Tech Raptor in the coming weeks. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. Stretch any final words on this library? Uh, I think it's strong, could be stronger. There's some weird picks in there, but. You know, you gotta you gotta mix some good in with the bad, mm -hmm. or not with the bad. Some overwhelming with the underwhelming. How about that? Yeah, some some all time classics, greatest games of all time. With the really there's, that one, like there's one guy out there that's just like hell yeah, alone Gargoyles. in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if that's you, I'm sure in your heart you have the better list of three games. <laughs> but thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.